So, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to our brand new shiny uh, demonstration room. Um, you'll be surprised to know that this is the first time we've used it. It was ready about five minutes before you all arrived. So we've all been busy working away, getting it, getting it all up and running and look, it's, it's fantastic. We tend to have our launches in more salubrious uh, locations than Macquarie Park, but there is two reasons why we've done it here. One is that we have got some really good tech, really good products to share with you today, and it's not that easy doing it outside of our demo room, but also because of COVID. It's quite complex now to, to run an event um, according to all the guidelines and to make sure we keep you safe and to keep ourselves safe, it's easy just to do it here. So, you know, it's not, it's not Melbourne Grand Prix, it's Macquarie Park, but we still think we can put on a, a great event for you. So just in terms of COVID, we've put some stickers around on the floor. You don't have to stand on them at all times. It's just to give you an indication about the 1.5 meter social distancing. We are all okay in terms of numbers of people for the room, so that's fine. But just uh, each tile is about half a meter wide, so that just gives you an indication. And if somebody does tap you on the shoulder to say, can you, can you move <laughs> apart, please don't take offense, but we're, just, we're taking it uh, quite seriously. The theme of the event today, uh, the new normal. Um, so you'd have seen that on the invitation. Uh, before I go in and, and explain the format of the day, I'll hand over to our Managing Director, Craig Heckenberg, who can begin the proceedings. Thanks, Bruce. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Macquarie Park and our head office. Um, I would like to start by, by saying thank you. I'd like to say, Thank you for your ongoing support of the Epson brand, and particularly over the last uh, nine months, thank you for everything that you've done for us. Uh, 2020 has turned out to be a bit of a, uh, bit of a year for, every, for all of us. Um, it's certainly been a year like no other. Um, it has challenged the way we all live and work, and in doing so, it's created some opportunities, but also some challenges for all of us. Like with many businesses, uh, navigating the unpredictability of this year has tested our organisation, and it definitely has. Uh, but I'm very proud of our team and the resilience that we've shown over this period. And in order to adapt and, and meet those challenges head on and uh, get to ourselves to, uh, I suppose, a position now where we are quite comfortable with uh, where we're gonna end up for the, uh, for the year. Over the past nine months, we, uh, we have experienced huge demand for our home theatre projectors and our printers, and particularly the Eco Tank range of products. Uh, we've also seen a huge demand for scanners, in particular our fast photo scanner, which has proven to be a standout product this year for us. And whilst the commercial parts of our business have taken a bit of a hit this year, we, uh, we're starting to see some good signs latter half of this year, which is, um, which as we see more people head back to the office, which is really good to see for us in, in overall. On the other hand, budgets and supply chains have been under immense pressure this year. Uh, this is largely due to the rapid changing consumer behaviour out there, which has impacted forecasting and our shipping lines. But one thing that hasn't changed here at Epson is our commitment to delivering new value to our customers and you'll see some of that on show here today. Epson continues to transform its business uh, in order to play a bigger role in helping make the world a better place. And we're doing so by providing new products and new technologies that will not only help our customers get on with their daily lives and their work, but also reduce their environmental impact. For example, one significant way in which we are looking to achieve this is through our heat-free technology, which is in all of our inkjet printers and can save up to 90% energy when compared to our comparable laser or copiers. And when we couple that with our paper making solution, Paper Lab, we're able to create with our customers a truly circular ecosystem that can contribute to preserving the precious resources. Whilst 2020 has, uh, has certainly been unprecedented in its challenges. 2021 has, um, is looking a lot positive for Epson globally. Uh, 
and we look forward to working with you and your publications as we move forward with our business. So with that, I'm, um, I've been one of the people that have been relegated back to my desk uh, due to COVID. So, uh, I, but I'm not, so this won't be the last time you see me. I will join you uh, later for a beautiful Japanese lunch. But until then, I'll hand you over to Bruce who will kick things off. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. <coughs> so, um, as Craig said, we're all kind of emerging from this, from this new COVID world. And, and without sounding too over dramatic, I think we've all realised that life may not be as it was before. And what we want to share today, we've just got a number of products which kind of enable our customers not only to, to play in this new world, but also work better in this new world as well. Now, the format today is, is quite old school in as much as we're not doing Zoom. I think maybe you're fed up with Zoom. We're a little bit fed up with Zoom as well, so there's no Zoom. We're also not doing PowerPoint either, so we really are going back to, to, to proper hands-on demonstrations. Now, we had everything working as smooth as it could be beforehand. If we do get a hitch, bear with us. Um, Murphy's Law normally says that we will get a hitch, but we've had it working beautifully up until right this minute. So yeah, no PowerPoint, no Zoom. I think we'll be in this room for maybe 40 minutes or so, so not, not a long time. Um, we're gonna run it like a, like a relay race. So we've got a number of stations that we're gonna walk you around the room. Um, when we're done, there'll be a few minutes just to, to go back to the areas that you may be interested in and ask some questions. Um, and then we'll go upstairs where we've, we've, we've themed two of our meeting rooms into a beautiful kind of a Japanese environment. We've got some trained sashimi chefs upstairs waiting to serve us lunch and, and serve us sake as well. So that is the, uh, that is the finishing line. Um, I'll just briefly explain the, the various kind of areas that we're going to walk through. So first of all, Paul Haddad over there. You may know him as Mr. Projector. We've actually shuffled the deck a bit internally, so now he's Mr. Printer. So Paul is gonna talk about how office printing has changed a bit in this, in this new world that we, we live in, um, particularly inkjet technology. Inkjet technology has been around for a while, but now <coughs> the benefits are really starting to, to, to become apparent in this new world. And he's gonna talk about um, how um, our technology uses much, much less heat, uh, it's much faster, uh, and also much better for the environment overall. He's also going to touch upon EcoTank. I know a lot of you um, own an EcoTank and, and, and are very enthusiastic about EcoTank, as, as are we. We um, mentioned a couple of weeks ago that we've now sold over 50 million EcoTanks globally, and that's just been accelerated by people working from home. All the benefits of EcoTank now are becoming much more apparent than they've ever been before. So he is going to talk uh, a little bit about what we're doing with EcoTank um, and also expanding the range. Paul's then going to pass the baton to Josh. He's just going to briefly talk about uh, our latest prosumer uh, photo printer. So again, people printing at home now is, is, is spiked as people have got more time on their hands taking photos and printing. So Josh is going to quickly touch upon that. Also, he's going to spend a few minutes talking about a more commercial printer, which we've also seen spike in, in sales because of these kind of mini businesses that have cropped up from people now uh, working from home or, or seeing opportunities in this, in this new norm. So a few minutes with Josh. Josh then is going to hand the baton to Sue over at the, at the back there. He's got a fantastic new home theatre projector to talk about. Um, launched today, um, really taking high-end smart projection to, a, to another, another level um, and really accessible to everyone, not just your home theatre uh, enthusiasts, but to, to the masses. So we've got a great um, product to share with you with Sue. And then the last 100 metres is done by Paul, our sprinter. Um, so he's taking the, the baton. He's going to talk about Fast Photo. Fast Photo, again, was a product, if I'm, off it, if I'm honest, surprised at how successful it's been. It was launched a year ago or so. We, we've just had trouble keeping up with stock ever since then. It has really been um, immensely successful for us. What Paul's going to talk about today is a really cool app that works with Fast Photo Scanners, and it just makes it even more fun, even more useful, um, even more functional as well. So we'll end with Paul. Um, 
when Paul's finished, a few minutes to wander around, then we'll go up and have, have some lunch. So I'll now hand over to Paul Hanel. Hey, nice to see you all today. So as Bruce just mentioned, Epson has recently shipped 50 million EcoTank printers globally. And locally, we've enjoyed a lot of success as well. For the past five years, we've extended our range from two units through to 17 units now. To make it easier for our customers to navigate the range that we have, we've broken our products into three distinct categories. So the first one you should be all very familiar with is just EcoTank. So this is the home user type printer, comes with up to two years worth of it inside the box. We then step on to EcoTank Photo, which has five inks in the box as well, five color sets, and is for budding photographers. The new addition is the EcoTank Pro range. So this is a much more robust machine within our range. It comes with pigment ink, and is really designed for small to medium businesses. Today we're launching the ET5800, so you see it here, but it's also in your press packs where you can read all the specs about it. At the heart of all these printers is our precision core heat-free technology. Uh, it links all the EcoTank printers, but it's also found in our enterprise and corporate printers as well. Unlike laser, which uses heat and pressure to fuse toner to a page, Epson uses no heat in the printing process. The best demonstration of this is the A3 printer that you see in the corner. Its laser equivalent uses 2,400 watts of power to print a single sheet. The Epson machine uses 42 watts of energy. When we take it to the A4 range here on the table, the machine to the laser machine to your right uses 14 times the amount of power to print a single sheet compared to the Epson machine. Uh, we have a simple demonstration set up here where I'm going to ask for some volunteers. This is the tricky part. Because you're closest, uh, your job is to watch that screen uh, and you have to remember the highest number that you see on the inkjet um, monitor. And I'll pick you because you were laughing. Uh, the, the laser one. That's all I do. Yeah. Uh, you have to remember the highest number that comes up on the laser meter. Uh, I'll take the fun job of actually pressing the button. Uh, you're doing the laser one on the right hand side. So we'll get the inkjet number first. What was the highest number you saw? Oh, well, I missed it. It was uh, 30.7. Yeah. And the uh, laser numbers? It was somewhere between 770 and 780. Yeah. So I took a very conservative view at the start and I said 14 times. That's more like 25 to 30 times the amount of energy you use to print the same print job at the same time. Yeah. The other benefit that we have with heat free technology is the low intervention printing. There are fewer moving parts, fewer consumables, and fewer things that can go wrong in this tech printer. What that means for a company is there's more uptime when you're printing, better productivity for your staff, and fewer people coming through your doors to actually repair the machine, which is becoming really important at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, you're too close, you have to go all the way. Uh, the last benefit I'll talk about um, is the first, first page out speeds. So because we don't use heat in our printing process, there is no warm up time for our printers. Uh, that becomes really apparent when I run this demonstration, uh, but it's really important within the offices. Everyone starts to drip back at the moment. The last thing you want to do is have a big queue of people in a cramped print room waiting for their job to come out. Uh, so you're all focusing on the big screen, so I'm just gonna press that button again so you can actually watch which job finishes first. So we, we're done, and I think they got two pages out of that print job. Yes. Are, are they both from Epson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so out of the demonstrations you saw here, there are three big takeaways. So heat free technology is better for the environment because it uses less energy and less CO2 emissions. It's better for productivity because it has a fast first page out and fewer breakdowns. And it's better for the bottom line because there are fewer consumables in this machine as well. 
if there's no questions for these demonstrations, I'll take the opportunity to pass you on to Josh. Without, without wanting to sound, oh, yeah. without wanting to sound insulting, are they the same print quality? Uh, yeah, you, you can compare. I've got the jobs here if you want. This one's slightly crumpled, but I can <laughs> happy, to, happy for you to re-hit the button. and. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're comparable machines, same speed rate and same print qualities. Feel free to come stand around the back or around wherever you like. Uh, so I'm Josh, I'm the uh, product manager for the uh, large format uh, products at Epson. Um, you'll see around you today a range of my printers, which are the, the technical printers and also the photo printers around me. Uh, but what I'm here to speak to you about today is the Epson Shore Color P706. So as part of the new normal, uh, everyone is uh, starting to work and, and stay a little bit more at home. What we're trying to do with this one is previously you guys have all gone out to a, a copy shop, got your, your images printed via a USB or a roll of film. You've waited in line, you have, uh, you know, there's been processing time, it's taken some time. Depending on how many prints you want, the cost can add up. So it is quite an expensive, uh, expensive task. What we're doing is bringing that in-house and making sure that people can do it from the comfort of their own study, home office, whatever you might want to call it. So this is where the uh, very affordable uh, Epson Shore Color P706 comes into play. Um, it's a 13 inch wide printer, A3+. Plus. Um, it has 10 ink carts in it, so 10 individual colors, including violet and four levels of black. Four levels of black uh, enable some really, really good uh, black and white photography, and the violet and the rest of the color mix gives you a really outstanding, uh, outstanding color print. So what I've done is I've printed um, a few different examples uh, of some of the, uh, what it's capable of doing. So this image here has been printed on a cold pressed bright paper and it's really showing off the blacks and the blues and the violets and the violet ink. This one here has been printed on a hot press natural paper and uh, this is really showing off the advanced black and white mode on the printer. The detail is, is really stunning. And then just a glossy photo paper. Everyone's sort of used to seeing a, uh, a print like that. It's got all the colors in there. It's really outstanding what they can do for uh, such a, a small format machine. And it's 30% um, smaller than the previous version, so it really does fit into your home office quite nicely. So um, that's all about this model. I'd invite you later to come up and actually check out the outstanding quality and the detail. I'm now gonna walk over to the other side of the bench. So the printer just behind you, sir. Um, this is the uh, Epson Shore Color F560. Um, it's a dye sublimation printer. So unlike our other printers where you print the, uh, the output and that is your final output, this one here, it works with a heat press. So depending on the, the type of thing that you are pressing, you print your image, you take your substrate that you're going to be sublimating uh, the ink onto or the, uh, the, the media and the ink onto, and uh, the finished uh, results are some of the different applications that you can see in front of you there. So um, in your, if you haven't had a chance to look at your press kit yet, uh, there is some face masks in there. There's a face mask in there. Those have been printed on this printer, the F560, and they've been sublimated onto the face mask. So in the current pandemic, what we have seen is we have seen people with pop-up businesses working from home and printing face masks and selling them online because there's been a huge demand. We're coming into the Christmas period at the moment, so People are in that gift buying uh, season. So things like mugs. You can die sublimate, print die sublimate via a heat press, which is actually on display there. And you can create and sell your own mugs online. Luggage tags, um, a really cool feature is these Chromalux boards. So you actually print your photography and sublimate it onto a, onto a board. So there's a number of different applications. It's also, um, as you can see, it's a desktop printer, but it also runs uh, the EcoTank style system. So it's running the same bottles of ink that you guys are used to on that. You fill them up. The cost of printing is very, very affordable. 
and um, yeah, there's many different applications for it. So if anyone's got any questions, feel free to ask me now or, or after uh, the presentations. PMS matching. So <coughs> PMS matching Pantone. Uh, not on, not on that one. Um, it's a four, it's a four color CMYK model. Probably projecting a slightly lower demand for the luggage tax. At the moment, <laughs> domestic, domestic is, uh, is open, but uh, yes. yes. Okay, um, if there's no other further questions, I will hand over to Sue. Three people can sit down. dramatic change to the way how we spend our time with our families. And Home Theatre is definitely no exception to that. And today we're launching Epic Vision LS300 Smart Laser TV Projector. What this projector makes is so unique is, is that it's a true alternative to the traditional TV formats. And a lot of you might ask, how can a projector be an alternate to existing flat panel? Well, there is a couple of similarities. Um, you can uh, navigate through the menus as you normally would do from the TVs, as how I'm doing right now, and you can just flip through the remote control and have the access of that, the control from your fingertips. But what this Epic Vision LS300 makes is so much more unique and the tr uh, alternative to the traditional panel is that you get up to 120 inch screen, as you can see right now, which is four times larger than 60 inch panel. So let me just ask you, what, what's the average size of the panel that's in the Australian household? 75, 85? 65, 65, 65. Well, with Epic Vision, you can get up to 120 inch bundle option screen, uh, which you can purchase separate or together. But this is what really makes the package a unique. So the projector here is straight out of the box. I actually literally set this up, not more than taking 10 minutes. True story. <laughs> and the screen, however, yes, you do need to install, but it's really light on, light on the wall. It doesn't, it doesn't take much of effort compared to traditional panel setups, which will take probably up to more than an hour. And I spoke to Salvatore actually earlier today. He said um, he set up one of this panel, a 75 inch TV, which cost about, I think, uh, $7,000 for you, and it was discounted by that um, It was, it was <laughs> 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 Well, what you see here exactly for that is extreme value for money. It comes, all total package is five, five, six, nine, nine. So you can get it much cheaper than what you can traditionally imagine for 75 inch to panel. So you're saying with the screen? With the screen, with the screen. Without a screen, it's under 4,000. Yeah. It's a really great, great amazing value uh, product. So what makes another example of this projector so great is the smart feature that comes with it. And one of the example is the Yamaha sound. Sounded by Yamaha, LS300 is specifically paired for that. And I'd like to demonstrate the content just for you to experience that. So who has watched Jumanji Next Level Up here? Okay, some of you, okay. Well, so for those who haven't watched it, hopefully I won't spoil it, uh, because I will only show a very few snippets of at the end of the content. So try to experience the powerful and the clear sound that Yamaha speaker can give you. So, well, for some of you might wonder, well, what am I going to do with expensive sound audio equipment that I have already invested in the house? Well, you can still connect to that, extending your quality so that you can really be the maestro of the musician. Um, but just let's be honest, how many flat panels out there partner with a quality like this with the Yamaha speaker? And this was the medium, with, with the, I put in a setting of the medium volume. So it, can, it has up to six different setups on the audio setting dedicated for that which you can change it according to the right sound settings that, as you like to have um, based on the content you have it's, it's definitely designed for the student wide audience in your family home um, just a couple of things I know a lot of you will be very sick of the zoom uh, <laughs> zoom conference LS300 comes with a dedicated app called power by zoom online meeting app so 
So whenever you actually <coughs> use this projector, not for the theater, you can use it for your work and meetings as well. And it's not just for yourself, it can be used for your wives, your kids, and every member of your family. It comes with a 7000 Fs, and plus more, you can extend it with the streaming as externally. And if you do want to, uh, if you do want to live streaming content, yes, you can do it with the setup box content. So I hope you enjoyed the demo content today. Um, and if you guys have any uh, questions, uh, please let me know. Um, and don't forget, this is a new alternate TV uh, to the traditional TV. I'll pay a thousand dollars if you play the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay a thousand dollars if you play the boys. What's and, the boys? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's on there. So is it, is it DLP or three? This is, or is this is three LCD. Sorry. Three LCD laser technology. Right. That's 4K, of course. Well, or not. this is well, what you see here is 1080p uh -huh. content. And it is 4K input uh, acceptable. So it allows the content to go through. But what you see is an HD 1080p, which, and I'm pretty sure you So can only project 1080p? This is 1080p. Okay. That's right. But if you do want 4K projector, we have a broader model called LS500. And that does the 4K, okay. 4K projection. Does it have eARC? Excuse me? Does it have eARC? Oh, yes, it has eARC. ARC. Yeah. Good sound bars. Yeah. It's got Yamaha. Yeah, it has an audio return channel. Mm. Yeah. How much is a 4K? 4K model is 4 triple nine, So it's a 1,000 up. Oh, and that's without the screen, of course. Without the screen. Yeah. Okay. And with the screen, you said it's... Is it two or three extra with the screen? So with a hundred inch screen, you're adding one thousand hundred dollars up to and another level you can add up one thousand seven one thousand seven hundred up to make it uh, price will come at five thousand six ninety nine. That's for the one twenty for the one twenty. That's one hundred and twenty inch. Okay. And you, you, have, you can handle the light. This well, I was going to ask you to turn the lights on or pull the blinds up. Sue, Sue well. didn't mention, but I'm sure she's oh. just about to. Yeah. The yeah. screens are called ambient light rejection screens. Uh -huh. I'm saying this like I really know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Uh, ALR screens. But it's it's one of the, one of the first times that it's the screen that's rejecting the ambient yeah. light, not a sensor through the projector or anything like that. So, And they've done that. They've specifically made those for the living room. Because yeah. obviously, you know, they're not. It, it's not meant for like that high-end man cave kind of thing. It's actually the screen is not flat. It's not exactly flat. Yeah, it's like you can say, it's can we actually see it turned off? It's actually, it's, yeah. um, the, you it's can tell there's something little different there. compared to because it bounces the light yeah. up, up at an angle into and, it, and then it, and then it rejects it. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. 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 That's pretty. Well, that's pretty bright light coming in the window there. That's still pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And are you suggesting? Should be placed like that in homes, or right up against the wall, or it has to be. So, so that, so that, that's about thirty-five centimeters from the wall. Yeah. Now, if you think about the average entertainment unit, and you stick your TV on it, I mean, I know my TV, the TV that Sue's telling you about, is probably about that far away from the wall. Anyway, yeah. I've got shelves above my TV or whatever. Yeah. But I think that could be placed thirty-six. Is it thirty-six? This is exactly thirty-eight centimeters 30 right yeah. now. And what you see from the end of the unit to the screen. Yeah. But come back, let's let's um, go over to Paul, and then if you want, I thought there'd be a few more questions about this and anything else. If you want to come back, we have a few bits on. So, um, before I start, is everybody familiar with uh, Epson Fast Photo? Um, uh, Craig, if, for those of you who aren't, um, Craig made mention of it. Uh, it's, it's a scanner that we've got that scans generally 4x6 photos, but it can do other sizes, panoramics and the like. It's the fastest scanner in the market. It's quite unique. Um, where um, we've seen, um, and, and uh, Bruce and, and the theme of the event is the new normal. Um, I just thought before I start the, the demonstration, here's an example of a social media post uh, <clears throat> recently from Victoria, where this woman was working for the NAB, who's obviously uh, on leave, but um, she spent 60 hours scanning her photo library using an Epson Fast Photo. 
<coughs> and digitising her images. And um, yeah, it's so, so with the Epson Fast Photo, it's a unique product, and what I'm gonna show you today is a unique app that makes uh, a great product that's been so well received, and we sell, sell so many of them. Um, it's actually, this app makes the product even better. And, and I'll, just, uh, I'll just bring up the app now. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, we would have liked to have the app uh, live today uh, in Google Play and, uh, and the I, uh, iOS, but uh, there's been a little bit of a delay, but it is coming and we're, we're allowed permission uh, to give you a sneak peek of, of the app. Uh, so what I've done is I've rated my, uh, my photo album and I've got three daggy photos uh, uh, to, uh, to show you. And guess what, it's disconnected. Here we go, ready. Okay, so I'm gonna scan the photos. The photos are from 1981. Uh, and I can I can categorize them. I'm not gonna go, gonna go into too much detail with the app because uh, there's so much you can do such as uh, correct image correction and enhancements and so forth but it's all it, you can do all this on your iPhone and uh, <coughs> before previously you needed a PC. So I'll just start the scan. I'll start the scan and I'm using my iPhone 6 iPhone 6 plus here so, uh, the compatibility is uh, is all. Oh, my, my, we go. A little bit of a glitch there, but yeah, using my iPhone six, so it's going to scan the three photos that I I, uh, I I rated from my photo album straight into the app. Processing two photos. Photos. Demo is not doing 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 me any favors here, but uh, <coughs> yes, there's three. There's the three photos, and actually, I'm applying some effects. Uh, <coughs> I'm applying some effects, but you, as I, as I mentioned before, you can you can correct those images uh, and 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 enhance them and the like. Could it um, work out which way up? Yes, it, it, yes, and you can actually uh, rotate the images, crop them, and, and the like. So once these images are stored into the app, I can view them. I can do I can do some corrections prior to uh, some settings prior to the scanning and apply them directly. But then I can also do them afterwards. And here I can directly share them via email uh, and the like, and, and 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 edit them. But the key thing about uh, about this app is my stories. Okay, so. What I'm going to do here is create a movie, a story, and I can do all sorts of cool things with the photos that I just scanned. Okay, so I'm gonna, gonna pick uh, three photos. I'll pick uh, that one, uh, that one, and that one, and I'll create, create a story. Okay, so these are the photos that, that, that I scanned. In the, in the scan that I, I performed before, I didn't include Auto correction, so I can actually enhance the image prior, but I haven't in this case. What I can do at the bottom of the of the app, you can see voice, text, add, scale, or rotate. <coughs> so in the case of voice, I'll add some some commentary to the photo. Uh, this is me in 1981, and I have a really bad haircut, and I'm not sure what's in my pocket. <laughs> this is me in 1981 looking at my hoarder neighbour's backyard. Uh, this is me last week. <laughs> All right, so I've added some voice to the uh, to the images that I've saved, and I'm going to save the story now. I'll give you a, a preview of the movie. So it's saved. Let's have a listen. This has been 1981, and I have a really bad haircut, and I'm not sure what's in my pocket. This is me in 1981 looking at my border neighbor's backyard. Uh, this is me last week. You can tell. <laughs> Okay, so that's my that's my movie, but I can do even more with this app. Okay, 
Uh, so I'll just go back into edit mode. So here's edit mode. So I, I added voice before. I can add text. So in this instance, I will just uh, let you know that that's me, that's Paul. And I can put that wherever I like. So if I have old photos and I want to identify who that is in the family, you could add that into the story. So I'll save that. And then what I can do is you would have heard some background music. Uh, there is some pre-built in background music to the app. Um, it ranges from what you just heard, but, but also I'll go back into edit mode. And that was cheerful. Now we do have those in there, but I, 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 I'm a bit of a, bit of a heavy metal guy personally. So I might just uh, add, add, uh, add that music. I'll just make sure I add that from my library. Bit of, uh, maybe that one. Okay. And I'll save that background music to my heavy metal. So, what I've done is add. This is me in 1981, and I have a really text. bad haircut. And heavy metal I'm not music sure what's in my to my story. This is me in 1981 looking at my There's water so many in the backyard. Uh, this is me last week. <laughs> right. So, you can see that I've added those three elements. You can scale and rotate. Uh, your 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 uh, your story. Uh, the the file that's saved is an MP4 file, so you can share that easily. Uh, you can also add existing images that you may have in your camera roll or from social media. You can add them into your story, so you can build a story from not only the photos that you scanned, but the photos that you already have. So uh, having this this app, uh, and we mentioned before that the the fast photo scanner. Is unique. Uh, this app, app makes a, a great product even better, and and the app is going to be released shortly. Uh, we'll have it up on uh, uh, Google Play and, and, and iTunes. Uh, it is free. So uh, <coughs> so uh, we'll we'll announce that very soon, and we've just been delighted to give you a bit of a sneak peek of the app. So uh, uh, thank the other, you very much. The other thing is, once you've made your movie, you then can use it. Yeah, as an MP, MP, MP4 file. Yeah. Coming up to Christmas, great idea to do a family kind of album. Maximum sizes? Uh, no, there's no maximum sizes. And actually, for each photo, um, so for instance, the default setting's four seconds, I can go up to 30 seconds. So if there's a short story to tell about a particular image, or if there's a long story, you can have the transition go at a longer length. So you can so your MP4 file could end up it, it, too it, big to email. It, it could be, it could be, yeah, but you can compress that. But well, you would see it, that you can tell the story as long as it needs to be told. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, that that file um, is uh, that, that 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 app is ready. And 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 sorry, it took a little while, but it it, it, it it very fast. It's probably just my old iPhone six. I probably need to update. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. So look, we've got a we've got a few minutes. So if people just want to wander around and ask the, the product managers more questions, that's fine.